Taking stock on Bloomberg, I'm Pim Fox. Now, we've been talking about energy today and its role as a hedge, perhaps, against inflation. We talked about the dollar and energy with Jan Stewart of Macquarie. My next guest says inflation will be overwhelming. It's all capital letters. Overwhelming six to nine months from now. Not sometime in 2011, 2015, in six to nine months. And he's preparing for this event by buying agriculture and gas and gas stocks. Ed Butowski, Managing Director of Chapwood Investments. Good to have you with us. Great. Um, first, you got to give me the inflation scenario. Why do you think we're going to have this overwhelming inflation it, it, in six to nine months? There's, well, first of all, I'm thinking sometime in the next uh, six to nine months, it's going to start. And it's going to start basically because of all the money that is in that's being flushed into the economy right now. And we haven't even seen the majority of it. More money is coming in from all the government spending programs. You also have this pent-up demand that's starting to really brew overseas and you're just going to start seeing prices go up and it's going to start slow and then it's going to get faster and faster and people aren't prepared for it in their portfolios right now. All right, but let, let me take the first part, right? Okay. We just talk about the U.S. government having pumped all this money into the system. Right. Isn't that designed to make up for all the money that left the system or somehow dematerialized when everyone woke up and looked at real estate prices and went, wow, all those bonds that are tied to real estate, all of those tradable derivatives, not worth very much, so the government comes in and says, we'll at least supply some of the oxygen to keep the economy right. on life support. And a absolutely. But at what point in time does it end? The government doesn't do a good job at a lot of things. When are they going to pull the plug on it and at exactly the right time? It's just not going to happen. It was in there to take care of some of the problems that were in the economy. Now, the question is, how much more money do we need? And a lot of people out there say we have just way too much money going into the system. And because of that, we, you know, we went in there to begin with to take care of the problem. Now the problem might have been taken care of. It might have been taken care of a little too much. Now the question is, when are they going to pull the plug on it? But and aren't you going to see me, come on, I mean, you, you, you're seeing any wage inflation? There's no wage inflation. You, Real estate prices are still headed down. Gasoline prices, they were going up a little bit, but we're not at $150 a barrel where we were last year, so that's Well, we better. shouldn't have been at $150 a barrel to begin with, but we did. We are 100% off of where they were. Now gas prices are coming up. You obviously see gas prices at the pump. You're starting to see, obviously, oil prices, which I just said. So you're starting to see signs of it, and it's just going to get worse. And there's certain things you should be doing in the portfolios to get ready for that. Okay. All right. Give us some examples. I mean, we know about tips, right? Treasury inflation protected securities. Are those something that every portfolio should have? I, I think that tips is a good place to have some money. However, I also think that the way those things are constructed, they don't play, uh, they don't take into account enough for what in the real inflation number is. So I think tips is a good start. The biggest problem I have right now is that you have a lot of people who are looking at the short end of the yield curve on municipal bonds and U.S. Treasuries. They're not happy with what they see. So they're going out much longer, and they're, gonna, they're getting sucked into buying longer-term treasuries and longer-term municipal bonds, and that is exactly the wrong place you need to be. You need to, if you're going to have fixed income, go to the corporate side. All right. And how about short duration, though? I mean, just in terms of time frame. Short duration, we want to be looking at what? Two years, five years max? Well, on, on government bonds and municipals, you don't want to look any longer than six months right now. Six months? Absolutely. You stay away from anything longer than that. Plus, it doesn't pay to do it. Where you go, go to the corporate side, go to the single A, go to the, you know, if you want to, the triple B side, pick up around six or seven percent, and you're literally going out. How far should you go there, though? About I mean, seven to eight years. Seven to eight years max. Right, because corporate bonds, Pim, as you know, are, are affected by the balance sheets of companies. The others are affected by literally the only thing is interest rates. All right. Okay. All right. We're going to continue the conversation. We've got more with Ed Butowski. I bet you have some more ideas on how to inflation-proof a portfolio. Absolutely. All right. More recommendations on where to put your money in an inflation-ridden economy. Ed Butowski. Also, we're going to talk about some agriculture ETFs that he has been buying. And a programming note. Bloomberg's Taking Stock begins each weekday at 3 p.m. Eastern on Bloomberg 11.30 a.m., XM Channel 129, Sirius Channel 130, and on Bloomberg.com. This is Taking Stock on Bloomberg. I'm Pim Fox. My guest is Ed Butowski. He's the managing director at Chapwood Investments. We're talking about inflation-proofing your portfolio. Ed, you've got some other ideas, right? And this has to do with getting down on the land. Well, getting down on the land. Getting down on the land, right? I mean, it's all about getting you agriculture. Well, look. Inflation is coming, as we said, as I said, and what you need to do is you need to buy something that's going to take advantage of that. There's an ETF 
um, which is which is the symbol is Moo M O O. Right, that's the market vectors ETF, agribusiness right. ETF. Everybody should have a little bit of that in their portfolio. And one of the individual stocks that I absolutely love is Archer Daniel Midland. They're going to take advantage. Both of those are going to take advantage of inflation coming in. Don't forget, we got Brazil, Russia, India, China, all demanding commodities and agricultural commodities. These prices are going to be going up, and everyone should have a little bit of that in their portfolios. All right, but this is a demand story. This is not a government reflating the economy story, right? It's, I, I think it's a combination of that. I believe that we, the pendulum swings really far in both directions, and the pendulum swung really, really far down, and we, we made up some of that in the beginning of this year. We're going to have a slow summer. Now we're going to start to see things reinflate towards the end of uh, in the fourth quarter. And I think everyone needs to now reposition their portfolios at this moment in time to take advantage of that inflation that will be here at the end of the year and the beginning of next year. It, to me, it's so obvious. I don't know why everyone isn't doing it. Okay, all right. So it's short, very short duration government treasuries if you want to be in government uh, paper. That's right. Um, six to seven year max for corporates uh, earning anywhere from, let's say, 6 to, what, 8 percent, depending six, six upon the eight. rating. That's correct. And now you're telling me agriculture and specifically you, you do that? something like uh, ADM. You, you look at ADM. Other, other areas that you look at, the natural gas prices are going to start moving. So which companies? Which way? Oh, they're going to start moving north for sure. You think they're going up? Absolutely. Where's the demand? The demand is going to come from all around the world. It's there, okay? I mean, I can't tell you specifically where it's going to come from, but as the, as the world economy start to do better than they were and start to really start to grow, I mean, we saw little signs of it last summer before all of this started. The demand for natural gas, the demand for oil, demand for all commodities is there, and you'll see these prices rise. So companies like XTO, uh, Neighbors, Basic Energy, all natural gas producers, and they're going to start refracking all these wells in the Barnett Shale. It's going to start happening in October, November, and as natural gas prices pick up, and you'll start seeing those stocks do well. Okay, so natural gas, we twin that actually with what's going on in, in agriculture because you mentioned uh, ADM, but in that agriculture fund, you've got potash, you've got mosaic, a lot of the fertilizer mm -hmm. stocks. Uh, what about alternative investments? Are there any areas that investors should be paying attention to that aren't on, like, you know, the sort of the, the general menu of investment a alternatives? Absolutely. So let me make a point very clear. We, we follow a core satellite approach. In the core, you have your Russell 1000 index, you have your small cap value, we have international in there, and now we actually put as a core holding emerging markets. But then what you do around that is the satellites. So we've talked about some of those. In addition, other satellites, you must start investing in some hedge funds. All right. You know, everywhere I go, everyone says, yeah, but what about Bernie Madoff? You know, what about that? You know what? Take him out of the picture for a second, because not everybody who's watching this program was invested in him. It was a terrible, terrible episode. But you can't put a black eye on an industry group or, excuse me, an investment because of one individual. Yeah, but I mean, what kind of hedge funds? I mean, they're, you know, they're all different kinds of hedge fund strategies. I mean, mm -hmm. how would you even go about selecting something like that? Well, each one is going to have to be dealt with on an individual basis. But my point is everyone should start looking at them. Which ones do I like? Well, obviously, the distressed funds. Okay, there's no question about that. Dist investing in distressed debt or distressed equity or both? Both. Both. Okay. okay. But, but you also have hedge fund managers to do that. I'm looking for non-correlated investments because we have to manage our risk somehow. And everyone just, as soon as you say the word hedge funds, people just back away and say, oh, my goodness, I can't go after those. Become more educated. Learn about them. Ask your financial advisor about these hedge funds. Find out which ones are right for you. And don't run away from them because those hedge funds could actually save your portfolio. All right. So you think that they're going to be a hedge against inflation? Oh, Absolutely. Why, why hedge funds particularly? Because they, they have some kind of edge on the market? Or why would they be, why would they be particular? I thought that inflation was good for the general stock market. For, for and, and they prices. are. And hedge funds aren't necessarily bad. And they, the, the, the key word there isn't negatively correlated, Pim. It's non-correlated. So they can go up along with them. Managed Futures is an example of hedge funds. Managed Futures in 1987 did very, very well when the stock market didn't do very well. They were up about 52 percent, Managed Futures. Other years where the stock market did well, they also did relatively well. Matter of fact, very few 12-month time periods did managed futures not do as well, uh, excuse me, didn't do well when the bond market was doing well and the stock market did well. What, look, about, what about soft, because I mean, you, you mentioned managed futures, I got to right. ask, what about, what about soft commodities, the uh, corn, soybeans, uh, things like that? I, I'm not an expert at those, but I would imagine anything that's out there that is a high, high demand like those, in, like those soft commodities are going to go up in price. Okay. All right. We're going to have to watch and see what happens. We'll have you back before. Ten months to see if we get any of this kind of inflation, okay. this overwhelming inflation. Appreciate it very much, Ed. Thank you, uh, Butowski coming in.